a double shooting in Aurora. Air Tracker 7 was over the scene just a short time ago, and we could see a large police presence out there. Uh, this is in an apartment complex very near Alameda and Chambers in Aurora. Uh, happened uh, just before 7 a.m. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon was the first on scene. And Colette, what do we know about the two victims here? We still don't know a whole lot about their condition, Brian. What we do know is that when officers first got to the scene, they found two people who had been shot. That first call, like you said, coming in just before 7 a.m. this morning. Take a look behind me. We still have a couple of investigators here on the scene. As we were pulling into this complex, which is a gated community, we saw a handful of police cars leaving, a fire truck, even an ambulance with their lights on. I spoke to a couple neighbors around here because initially when I got here, it seemed like a pretty sleepy community, something that's pretty safe. But they told me not to judge a book by its cover. They said there are many incidents that unfortunately do happen in this area, this part of Aurora. But we are still working to learn more about what could have led up to this and what exactly happened here this morning so early. Once police tell us more and give us a little bit more details, we'll bring those to you as quickly as possible. Live in Aurora, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. It is a Denver 7 weather action day as uh, the snow has passed, but the remnants are making for a tricky morning commute. Uh, the weather is also causing some delays for schools and government offices, which we have scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Meanwhile, we have team coverage spread out across the metro. The sun is really nice to see mm -hmm. out there and uh, kind of glistening off the snow, uh, but it's still very cold out there. Yeah. It, it, single digits are not yeah. warm. Yeah, no, it feels no. like about zero uh. out there this morning. So it's cold and yeah. it's slick. And the sun is blinding right now. So yeah. anybody yeah. heading east, it bounces off the snow. It bounces in your eyes. Yeah. And you just go, oh, I can't see where we're We can going. see in those shots. Uh, yeah, you can see it out. actually. Right. Take yeah. a look at a couple of the quad splits that I have mm -hmm. set up for us here this morning. As you can see, some of the road conditions, they are changing and improving in some areas, not so much in other areas. Uh, you can see from the uh, cameras all the sunshine that we're dealing with and whether it's going to be up to the north side of town, out to the west side of town. We still have some chain of traction laws up that way, but Loveland Pass has reopened and you can still see 6th Avenue and that drive on I-70 over by Central Park. Take a look at the other four cameras and you can see some of the other conditions like down at the Denver Tech Center, 225, C-470, and this is over by Castle Pines and Surrey Ridge. Actually, I-25 is looking better coming out of Castle Rock right now. Overall drive times like to the south side of town still pretty heavy. That section between University Colorado Evans still really tight stop and go traffic in there. A lot of traffic on 225 for us here this morning and it's not too bad that you are from DIA with mostly just wet roads there as well as E470. It's just been a really a, a pretty decent drive for us out that way. A lot of traffic into downtown as you saw some of the slower go traffic is mostly in the 20s, 30s, 40s, depending on where you're going here this morning. And so Lisa, it's just going to take some time. That sunshine is really going to start breaking it up here later this afternoon. Yeah, that drive later on today is going to look a lot better for sure. Uh, right now, uh, Denver 7 weather action day. We're looking at when you look at some of these totals anywhere from four to around eight inches. So the storm timing wise and totals wise did what we wanted it and what we thought it was going to do, which is always nice. Wheat Ridge seven inches, South Denver right around six, officially 3.9 out at DIA. So we're just under 30 inches now so far for the season and getting pretty close to some of those average totals for this time of year uh, across the state. Skies are clearing. It's beautiful in the mountains right now. We're seeing some blue skies there and some of the clouds that we had here in town are now starting to break up and we'll see plenty of sunshine through the afternoon. It is cold single digits to low teens right now. We're going to be at right around 27 by 11 o'clock and then low to mid 30s this afternoon between about two and four. So just above freezing for a high today. Tomorrow's going to be about 10 to near 12 degrees warmer. So a lot of melting in store as we head into the weekend, which will be nice. We're going to send it out now live to Veronica, who's la, uh, live there in Arvada. And Veronica, I'm sure conditions have been improving over the last couple of hours. They have, and really specifically over the past 30 minutes or so. First off, we've been talking about how powdery the snow has been, and you can see right at my feet. This is what we've been talking about all morning. That powdery, fluffy light snow, especially as it comes off some of those cars that had it on them all night long. I'm going to take you out to the roadway here where you can really see that sun is starting to beat down. Not too much traffic. That's probably because of those school delays. City and county buildings have a little bit of a delayed start as well. What we are starting to see because that sun is starting to come out and have an effect on some of those roadways and the snow that's on them is cars are slowing down as they come up this hill on McIntyre Street and 58th Ave. And that's because we're seeing a little bit of melt, not too much. You can see a plow came through here at some point. So the roadways themselves not looking too bad this morning. We were on some of those smaller streets earlier. Those were a bit slippery. 
definitely something to watch out for this morning as you head off on that morning commute. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Veronica. Well, DIA is also warning anyone uh, flying out today to just check your flight status. So far, the delays and cancellations aren't too terrible. There are 61 cancellations, 44 delays so far this morning. That's not too far off the norms. The storm has moved into the eastern part of the country, though, and could affect other parts of the country. So just be sure to check your flight status before you head out to the airport. And you can always keep up with current road and weather conditions anytime on the free Denver 7 Plus app. We have an hour by hour forecast and our 24 7 weather stream there. We will also send you a push alert for any crashes to know about on the roads. You can download it right now to Roku, Amazon, Apple or Android devices. This morning, the Douglas County School Board will post its job opening for a new superintendent. It comes after a five hour meeting that went late into the night. The board decided to extend its original timeline in searching for a superintendent. So now it plans to discuss applicants March 1st and could vote on finalists March 3rd. Sources within Douglas County say that the choice by the majority school board for the next superintendent is Aaron Kane here, a former interim superintendent in Douglas County and currently heads the American Academy Charter School. However, no names have been made public. Meanwhile, the Douglas County School District will not be releasing the names of teachers who called out sick on February 3rd. That was the day the district had to cancel class as many teachers called out to protest the firing of former Superintendent Corey Wise. Those names want, were requested through an open records request and they were set to be released last night. But safety concerns arose when teachers at two schools had threatening letters left on their cars. A, a teacher we spoke to who we will not identify said coming into work was stressful. To have this idea that someone wanted a list of teachers for a reason I can only think of as negative. I think some teachers probably felt scared, some felt just more stressed than they already do. Yeah, the school district tells Denver 7 police are looking into the letters. During last night's school board meeting, a directors condemned those efforts to threaten or harass teachers. Still ahead at eight, new numbers show the U.S. labor market might not be recovering as strongly as expected. And the odds are in. The Broncos have a better shot of landing quarterback Aaron Rodgers than most other teams.